Welcome to the Word of Life Center podcast. It's our desire that today's message would equip and empower you to see the Word of God bring life to your life. Once uh, the Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You told me to preach. Now I'm preaching. (laughs) Hannah, please stand up. (laughs) The apostle. (laughs) I forgot it. I forgot it. I forgot it. I'm sorry. I repent. I'm sorry. (laughs) It's coming. It's coming. I'm not looking this way. I'm looking over here. (laughs) The Apostle Paul once said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I'm here this morning to tell you too, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because I know what the gospel is. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God. Power of God. For salvation for everyone who believes. So I do crusades. I love to do crusades because I love the gospel. I love to preach the gospel. And it's very simple. And I'm a simple man too, so it fits very well for me. So one day in, in, in one of my crusade meetings, uh, a guy entered to my platform and he, he was drunk, drunk. And I, 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 I don't like to have drunk people on my platform. I didn't know the reason. His name is Abdullah or was Abdullah because he changed his name. So he was a Muslim and I was preaching him. And he hated my preaching. He didn't like my preaching. I can't understand why, but because I do my best, I'm looking good. And uh, not all preachers are looking good, but, um, <laughs> but he didn't like my preaching at all. Um, he hated my preaching. So he said, I, today I didn't want to listen to you. My, I have a quite good PA system. So he said, I went uh, to the other side of the town and went into a bar and drank. Just to forget your preaching. And then, I I mean, I I became drunk. And then you started preaching and I could hear every word across town. And I like that. And it made me so upset. So I ordered one more beer and I got even more drunk. I didn't want to listen to your preaching. But suddenly, when I was drunk, something hit me. A power entered into my life. And I'm here drunk. I know I'm still drunk. But I'm here to tell the whole city I'm born again. So here's the question. Can, get, can drunk people get saved? Oh yeah. You don't need to get drunk in order to get saved. But if you are drunk you can get saved. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. In the first service this morning I told about another guy. I mean, he, he, he looked so bad, so bad. He was so dirty. Even I, I can't uh, describe how dirty he was. And, and he, I, mean, he, I mean, the smell was, and I, I can't explain it. It was so bad. And he, they allowed him to, to come to my platform. He wanted to testify. And, and I was a little bit upset because, I mean, he was so bad. <laughs> He was really so bad. I didn't know him, but the people knew him. And then he said, today, as I was listening to the gospel, I got saved. I said, really? Really? And people are laughing, laughing at him. So then he said, yeah, I know you're laughing. I know my smell is so bad. I know I don't look good. But you don't know why I became an alcoholic. Then I said, you know, when Tanzania was in war with Uganda, I was on the front line in Uganda chasing Idi Amin. And I have killed too many people. And I can't get rid of their eyes. I'm, I'm drinking because I'm hurting. But today, when you were preaching the gospel, I got saved. 
And still people didn't believe it. He was so drunk, you know, he was so bad. But the next day, I saw a guy in a crowd and I asked myself the question, could it be him? It was him. He was sober. He was cleaned. He was dressed up. He came and get, gave his testimony again. He was a changed man from inside and out. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God. We need, I need the power of God. I could never be a Christian without the power of God. Just to be honest, I want to be a Christian. It means following Christ. But sometimes it's not that, that easy. But when we have the power, the power of God, the power to change our lives, the power to change everything around, the power of God is so powerful. The most hopeless people can get saved. I know I'm not perfect. And when Pastor Sam looks at me, he says, yeah, you are not perfect. But I know I'm born again. I know, I know I'm born again. How can you know? Because my life is changed. The power of God. So, so what is the power of God? For me, the power of God is a person. That person's name is Jesus. Just mention his name. You will always have a reaction. When you mention his name, even in the streets, you will have a reaction. Some people, you're making them happy when you mention the name of Jesus. And other people are getting so angry and upset that so they want to kill you. So what is it about that name of Jesus? It's the power of God. The devil knows the power of God. The devil know, know Jesus and he tried to take him down and destroy him. But he couldn't. They, people said they killed Jesus. No, nobody killed Jesus. I don't believe anybody killed Jesus. Because if man could kill Jesus, he wasn't the son of God. No man can kill God. That's impossible because he's God. Yes, I know Jesus was on the cross, but he shouted out, it is finished. It means that everything God you wanted me to do, I did. It is done. And he gave up his spirit. They didn't kill him. You can't kill God. That's why Jesus is different to all the other gods. Because they are not gods. He is God. He is the power of God. And I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of Jesus. Glory to God. So the devil was made happy. Very short. Because the third day. Jesus rose from death. Actually he is still alive. He is the same yesterday. And today, he's the same today. He can change your life. It's nothing about the past of your life. Everything will change when you call upon the name of Jesus. I've been traveling around the world. And there are so many religions around the world. And, and they ha you have to do this and you have to do that. And you have to do that and you have to do this. And, and it's very confusing because if I do it wrong, that God can't help me. But it's easier. Just to call upon the name of Jesus. Just believe in him and call upon his name. And you will, you will feel um, the power. The power. The power. Like those two drunk men. They were not drunk anymore. So Adala, he said, my name is Abdullah. I want another name. Because he couldn't be associated with his former life. Because he had a new life. So he asked me, please give me a name. A new name. I said, what, what kind of name should we give him? Then one of the pastors uh, told me, give him the name of Emmanuel. So I gave him the name of Emmanuel. And what is the meaning of Emmanuel? God with us. God is with us. Because of the gospel. God is with us this morning. It's nothing about your circumstances. It's everything about God being with us. You can call upon the name of Jesus. And God is here. 
people ask the question, where's God? <laughs> it's very easy. Call upon the name of Jesus. God is walking in. God is showing up. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Then Jesus, he said, go into all the world and preach the uh, good news. The gospel is the good news to all creation. And as we were worshiping, I, I, I was reminded about a tribe in Tanzania. The Barabai tribe. When we came to Tanzania in 1974, they created a lot of troubles. Driving on the highway, passing through the land, the government warned the drivers not to stop. You can get killed. They had a custom in the culture. The young men could never be allowed to be married. Any young men here want to be married? No, it's not normal in the U.S. to get married. Even in Africa, the young men want to get married. But in order for, 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 for the tribal pe people to get married, they have to prove they are men. All right. All right. All right. Did you prove you were a real man? And how, how did he prove it? By killing. With a spear. Only with a spear. And you have a choice. Thank God for the choices. Kill an elephant and you can get married. It's not that easy. Or a lion. They kill lions with the spirit. But it's dangerous. Or a human being. So what would you choose? The human being. And they were not allowed to kill among themselves. So they went into the, to the neighboring tribes and they killed people and they killed people because the young men were desperate. They wanted to get married. So they didn't like to kill, but they wanted to get married. They wanted to prove I'm a man. The government did everything what he could do to stop it, but he failed. Then we got that thought. We would change it. How do you change it? I mean, we are not Tanzanians, we are not Africans. We are white people from Europe. How do you change it? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Praise Christ. Bring them the gospel. So I got the permission from the government to go out and preach. This is a long story. I have to show the court. Uh, but I needed to find a leader. And I found a leader. But he was not speaking Swahili. So I need to find somebody who could translate for me. I got a young man. He was not a Christian. He helped me. So we talked to the leader. And, and uh, we, we put him in my car. He never sat in a car before. All of you have been sitting in cars all of your lives. But we never ever entered the car. How do you sit and where do you sit? It was funny. Then I gave him a mic and I had a horn speak on top of my car. I told him, you have to talk to your people as I'm driving in, 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 the, in the forest. Telling people to come to the meeting point. The meeting point was a special tree. And when he talked into the mic and his voice came out and the horn speak on the top of my car. It was magic. He was speaking, I was driving for a long time. Finally, we came to the tree, we stopped. And we were waiting, and people came out from the bushes. They came out, came out. And I started to preach the gospel. I preached about Jesus, but no reaction. Everybody was looking at you, white man. <laughs> now, all the young man, you have an opportunity to kill him. You can get married. <laughs> if I was scared, yes, I was scared. I gave an invitation, but nobody wanted prayers. Nobody wanted to receive Jesus. No sick people want to get healed. So I left him as a failure. After some months, I thought, I have to try again. So I went out and I tried again, but I never left my car because they stoned my car. They were angry. I felt as a failure once more. After a long time, finally, some years later, I thought, I have to do it again. And I went out and preached the gospel and a war broke out between the tribes and I had to flee. I felt a failure again. But I'm here to tell you today, if you are not ashamed of the gospel, which is the power of God to salvation. If you trust and believe in him, you will never be a failure. You might feel you are a failure, but you are not a failure. Today. Because it's a long story. Today, the signboards are not on the road anymore. Today, there's not a custom of killing people anymore. Today, churches are built everywhere. The gospel changed the people. 
It is the power of God. That's why I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because the gospel is a person. The gospel is a man. And the name of the person is Jesus. He's still the same yesterday and today and forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. I have to tell you about a, 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 a lady. Because she was a Christian. Some evil men raped her. Just... Because she was a Christian. Can you imagine that? Three evil men decided to rape her because she was a believer. And after they raped her, she got ill with HIV. We came to the city, Bokoba, and preaching the gospel, I can never forget it. When they brought her to the meeting, she was skinny. She, she was in a final stage before death. Only bones. I can never, never forget it. It burned in my mind. It burned in my heart. She was still a believer. She was still not ashamed of the gospel. You can ask many questions. Why? Why God? But she still believed in Christ Jesus. She cried and she cried and she cried. And we prayed and we cried and we prayed and we cried. It's unfair. But she still believed. Saturday night, we are praying for her once more. And you know, sometimes, sometimes... Because God is merciful. I felt the Holy Spirit moving in my heart. And I, I hear myself tell her, Sister, I believe Jesus just healed you. I don't want to manipulate. But I, I just felt it. So I told her, Monday morning, go to the hospital where you have been treated for so many years. And bring your pastor with you. Because I believe Jesus healed you. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the man. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Monday morning we left town very early. In the afternoon I was still driving. And my phone was ringing. It was the pastor. He was shouting of joy. He said, all day long we have been in the hospital with the sister. And he had tested her again and again and again. And finally he said, we don't understand it. But there's no more AIDS. It's gone all of it. We don't know how it happened. But it happened. She is not the same lady. She is a different lady. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. He is my savior. I know he is my savior. I never doubt it. I never can doubt it. Because he changed my life. I'm not perfect. But I know my name is written in the book of life. He made it. He made that book. He told the angels to put my name down in the book. I'm not perfect, but I'm forgiven. I'm not perfect, but I'm cleansed in his blood. I'm not perfect, but he gave me my, his spirit. I'm not perfect, I'm anointed by the Holy Ghost. I'm not perfect, but if I call upon him and follow, follow his footsteps, he will show up anytime. It's nothing about my feelings. It's nothing about your feelings. Call him. Call him. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will set you free. He will change you. He will make you bold. When he walk in the house, the demons are trembling. When he walk in the house, the devil knows it's done. When he walks in the house, the sick people are getting healed. When he walks in the house, your life will be changed forever. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Oh, I have to tell you, Pastor Sam mentioned that God opened a door for us to the nation of Jordan as a Muslim nation. And I can't tell you all the stories. But last year, I think it was last year, we met Mr. Visum. Mr. Visum, Muslim from Iraq. 
high ranking military guy. I have pictures with him together with American generals. But you see, within Islam, there are 16 groups. And they are fighting each other, all of them. If you are not one of us, even you're Muslim, we have to kill you. You're an infidel. So, because Mr. Wissam was very successful, another group wanted to kill him. He knew it. He followed him all over. But he was protected. But one day, he planted a bomb in his car. I have, I have a picture of his car. No, what was a car. But God protected him. And on the spot he recognized, if I'm going to survive, I have to flee now. He never said goodbye to anyone. He just fled. Ended up in Amman, the capital city of Jordan. Doing nothing as a refugee. His life was destroyed. No honor anymore. One day he was just walking the streets and he saw a church building. He thought, I've never been in a church. Maybe I should go in the church. People are walking in the doors. When he came to the doors, there were guards. He looked at him and he said, "Mm -mm, you can't enter that, our building. You are not one of us. Think about it. A church. He recognized he was not one of them. So they didn't open the door for him. He said, I felt so sad. I felt so down. But after a couple of weeks, I walked the streets again. I saw another church. And people walking into the church. I saw there were gods. And I said, "Mm, should I try? He said, okay, I will try it. When it came to the gods, they opened their arms and received me. And said, welcome. I said, I walked into the church. And I didn't understand everything. First time I attended a church service. But in the pews, I saw some books. He didn't know it was Bibles. Because the church puts Bibles in the, in the pews because the Muslim people don't have Bibles. And they're allowed to take them with home with them and, and read them. Then he said, I, 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 I heard a voice inside me telling me, look at the books. They are worn out. You don't have a job. You don't have anything. You can fix the books. Take some books. Bring home with you in, in your room and fix them. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not a thief. But the sound, the voice... Talk to me all the time. Finally said, I had to take four books. I went back home and I fixed the books. I went back to the church, next service. And the same voice told me, there are more books. Fix them. I said, no, no, I'm not a thief. But the voice said, take four more books. So he took four more books and fixed them. Brought them back to the church. Finally, he took the last four books. He fixed them. Then the sound, the voice told him, You never opened the book and read the book. Read the book. So he said, I opened the book and I read the book. And I got a terrible headache. And my eyesight went south. I couldn't read. I got scared. What kind of book is this book? I went to the hospital. I said, doctor, please help me. I mean, I have a terrible headache. And my eyes, something is wrong. And the doctor looked at me and tested me. He said, there's nothing wrong with you. He went back to his room, he fixed the last four books, went back to church. And Mr. Wisdom said, I have to talk to Pastor Khalid. Khalid is the pastor's name. And he said, Pastor, you know, I fixed all the books. Pastor, I knew. Oh, you, you knew it? Yeah. I didn't mean to do something wrong. No, it wasn't wrong, Pastor Khalid said. And then the other day, I read the book. And I don't understand why there's such a power in the book, so I got a headache. And even my eyesight went wrong. Then the pastor explained, this is the word of God. Then Mr. Wisdom said, if this is God, I surrender to Jesus. And he received Christ Jesus as his Savior and as his Lord. But he said, you know, Egon, I hated those people. They destroyed my life. He wanted to kill me. So I came to church. And I saw a cross in the church. And the pastor was preaching about the cross. And the man on the cross. And then he said. If you have some problems in your life. Here's a piece of paper. Write it down. Whatever. Whatever. So Mr. Wisdom said. I took the piece of paper. I wrote hatred. 
And then the pastor said, nail it to the cross. And gave him a hammer and he nailed it to the cross. And Mr. Vishal said, Egon, in the very moment I nailed it to the cross, I was set free from hatred. It changed me. Oh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the cross. There's something special about the cross of Jesus Christ. This is the power for salvation. Then Mr. Wisdom told me, one day I walked the streets of Amman. And suddenly I saw the lead of the group who destroyed my life. And I made eye contact. And this guy, he fled. I ran after him. He thought I would kill him. And I said, before that happened on the cross, I was dreaming about how I could kill him. I called him by name. I said, wait, I have a message for you. I don't hate you. I don't want to harm you. I know you wanted to kill me, but you never succeeded. And he stopped. And then he said, Mr. Wisdom, I gave him the gospel. The gospel which changed my life. There's power in the gospel. Today, Mr. Wisdom lives in the church. In a room in the church. Changed. Changed. If you want to change a nation, you have to preach the gospel. If you want to change your family, you have to lift up Jesus. If you want to change anything... Preach the gospel. I know it's very simple. It sounds very simple. I don't care. Because it's powerful. My son Reuben came to US before us. And he went to Dallas. And one day he went to a big, 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 big shop. You know, in the US we have big shops. Big shops. It was a Harley Davidson shop. I mean, he posted pictures on, on Facebook. I'd never seen a big shop like this before. You know, I'm from Africa. Hundreds of Harley Davidson motorbike. And then he wrote, I died. And went to Harley heaven. <laughs> I died. You see, in order for us to experience the power of the gospel, we have to die. We have to die from ourselves. We have to die from our egos. We have to die from our sins. We have to die. But we don't like to die. That's a problem. But it, it will benefit you when you die from yourself. Whosoever calls upon the name of Jesus is dying. But no resurrection without death. The cross is so painful for Jesus. He was hurting. But as soon as Easter morning, Easter's coming up and we celebrate Easter. We can celebrate Easter because he died on the cross. And he rose again. He rose again. If he was dead forever, he would never be God. Never ever be God. But he rose again and is still the same yesterday, today and forever. He is still alive. He is the God. He is the living God. He is the son of the living God. All God's power is in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have four more minutes. Do you hell is still real? Hmm? Oh, I'll try once more. Do you know hell is still real? Yes. Do you want to go to hell? No. I never met anyone who wants to go to hell. I've been preaching for millions of people in Africa, and nearly every crusade I ask people if there's some if someone to go to hell, can I see your hand? I never get any hand. No one wants to go to hell. Do you know heaven is real? So my second question is, anyone here want to go to heaven? I get all the hands. But are you sure you're going to heaven? There's only one road. There's only one way. There's only one door. There's only one name. There's only one savior. And his name is Jesus. 
And if you call upon his name, you will be saved. Because he is the power of God for salvation. Many people mention God, 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 God. It's not good enough. God himself introduced Jesus as the Savior. I'm not God. You are not God. We can't change it. But we can obey him. Call upon his name. And you will be saved. Forgiven. Having a new life. Hell is still hot. Hot. I mean hot. Just now in Africa it's too hot. We are sweating like crazy. Difficult to sleep during the night time. It's so hot. It reminds me about hell is even worse. I'm not going to hell. The heat in Africa is more than enough. You are lucky you have air conditions. We don't have air conditions. Even the fan can cool you down. You are sweating, sweating, sweating. And I was thinking about hell. No, no, no. I'm, I might be stupid and dumb, but I'm not going to hell. I believe in Jesus. He saved me. He is my savior. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven because heaven is real. Sin is still wrong and the Bible is still God's word. Jesus is still the only way to salvation. And listen, if you feel you are drowning. Because of your circumstances. Your lifeguard, he walks on water. He saved me many times. Many times. When I was drowning. You know, I learned to swim because I'm a fisherman's son. I was just a little boy when I learned to swim. But you can't swim forever. You get tired, worn out, and you will drown. But your lifeguard is walking on water. Walking on water. So, whatever your experience of struggles and fights, sickness, disease, demons, Whatever. Jesus is able. Jesus is willing. A couple of guys in the Bible said, Jesus, we know you can. But we, we really don't know if you want to do it. We know Jesus can do it. And he wants to do it. Because he answered that question. I will. I will. I will. I will. Amen. God called Moses when he was an old man, sending him to Pharaoh, and he was not a friend. Pharaoh was not a friend. So, God, how can I present your calling for me to go and see him? And God said, Just greet him and tell him, I am. Hmm, that sounds stupid. <laughs> but thousands of years later, it makes sense. I am. Not I was, but I am. I'm still the same. Never changed. My message never changed. I'm still the same. People are getting born. People are growing up. People are dying. But his name is still there. He is still the same God. Powerful God. Of salvation. Of healing. Deliverance. Whatever you need. He is there. Walking on water for you. When people tell you it's impossible, he tells you everything is possible uh, with God. Thank you, Jesus. Please bow your head. And if you need him uh, this morning, uh, I'm done. I just want to pray a prayer with you. If you need him, uh, number one, make sure you know you're born again. Make sure you have peace in your heart with God. Make sure if you die... uh, Right now, you're not going to hell. Or people say, I hope I'm not going to hell. No, 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 that's not good enough. That's not good enough. I, I, I don't hope I'm married to my wife. This year we've been married for 50 years. I know it. I know it. Any time of the day, anywhere on the planet Earth, I know she is my wife. I know I'm born again. I might not deserve it, but I know it. I surrender my life to him. 
asked for his forgiveness. He forgave me. He gave me a new life and a new spirit. I know I can be down in the valley, but I belong to him. I can be on the top of the mountains, but I belong to him. I can be poor, but I know I'm born again. I can do mistakes, but I'm still born again. He saved me. He is still my savior. It's not every day I have the good, good feelings about it, but I know, I know he saved me. I call upon his name every day. Make sure that Jesus is your Savior. Thanks for listening to the Word of Life Center podcast. You can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at our website, wordoflifecenter.org.